Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes, and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to be here today and today's topic I think is really unique and exciting. We're going to talk about erotic blueprints and help you discover your blueprint type. And you know, this is thrilling actually. I've known about these for a long time and I just did my type the other night. And part of what I find thrilling about this is that a lot of couples come together and love each other but they don't necessarily have a sexual compatibility or they don't even necessarily talk about what makes them, you know, turned on and turned off. And so this is a a really fabulous way to enter into the conversation. And I'm excited to have Ian Ferguson here today with us. So welcome, Ian. Thank you, Shana. I am excited to be here with you. I love the intro there too. Great. And let me give you a quick bio for those who don't know of you, and then we can dive in. So Ian is a master trainer of the Erotic Blueprint methodology and co-founder of Jaya Inc., which is a company dedicated to radically transforming how society discusses and experiences sex. He's an international speaker who's appeared on top podcasts for Tony Robbins and media such as Good Morning America. And his mission, along with a hundred, more than a hundred certified Erotic Blueprint coaches, is to release shame around sex and help people empower themselves to reclaim the pleasure and true erotic expression that is the birthright. That is a beautiful, beautiful mission. I love it. <laughs> Call to arms. Yes. Awesome. Well, why don't we start with what an erotic blueprint actually is, and then we can dive in from there. Beautiful. And I'm curious to hear what yours is, but we can go through the blueprints and leave it a mystery. Okay. Uh, hanging we'll leave it a mystery. Chad until uh, <laughs> people know what the blueprints are. Okay. So the erotic blueprints, it's basically like an erotic uh, typing system. So your, what's your erotic personality? What turns you on? What turns you off? What are the shadows that might be blocking your pleasure, putting the brakes on your pleasure? And it's also a very deep language in how to communicate those desires and needs Mm, in a way that you can get your needs fed and fulfilled. I love that. Yeah. Um, And then we could dial in on briefly on what each one is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about the different blueprints because, you know, people come into this world with different preferences or we have experiences that create different preferences and for people to really know and expand their sense of, oh, you know, everybody has different desires and none of them are wrong. Yeah, totally. So one of our big things is that nobody's broken. Yes. We just, many of us are misunderstood. Many of us don't have any knowledge or understanding of even the type that we are. We also call call it the sexual masking. Mm. So let's say, for instance, let's take a stereotype of what people think of as masculine sexuality. Yeah. Often that is what we call the sexual, which is the person who's just into genitals, wants to have mm-hmm. sex, wants to have the orgasm, and seems to be obsessed with intercourse yeah. and uh, you know, like getting the rocks off. So a lot of men, because that's what we grow up watching in pornography, in our ma- male uh, archetypes that are presented to us as what masculinity is supposed to be, a lot of men walk around with a uh, mask, a sexual mm-hmm. mask, 
when very likely they may be one of the other blueprint types. Aha. Uh-huh. Like that's yeah. the that's the way they express thinking that that's the right way to be if I'm going to be manly or masculine and yet there may be something else under the surface that they haven't really explored yet. Exactly. And when we're doing that, then we're cut off from our true pathway of arousal and we're we're playing a role, playing a character and then that's where some of those things that maybe come in of like what's wrong with me am i broken am i wrong i'm not turned on by what i think i'm supposed to be turned on right. by right yeah so that's a beautiful thing that comes when people take the erotic blueprint quiz just as kind of like a first step into getting into our ecosystem mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. we get a lot of aha moments for every gender of like oh my god i didn't even know that this was a thing yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I one of the that's most really freeing Yes, completely. And one of the most, um, one of the, one of the areas we get that most with one of the blueprint types we get that most with is the energetic blueprint Uh because it's really a blueprint that is not witnessed or seen. And if it is seen in our culture, often it's like, what is that? That's weird. Who are those people? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So energetics are turned on by space, anticipation, the tease, the kind of thing of when you're moving in for a kiss and it, the lips are hovering above each other's lips and you never actually give the kiss mm-hmm. or deep eye gazing and heart connection. And energetics can be become orgasmic. They can, they can have orgasms by not even being touched. Uh-huh. You can literally be standing 20 feet across the room from an energetic. And if you're feeding them with the kind of energy that turns them on, they can go into orgasmic response. Mm -hmm. So for people who don't know what that looks like or don't have experience with that, you know, sometimes it shows up in what we call kriyas, which end up looking kind of like uh, jitter um, jolts in the body. Uh Yeah. Energy moving through the body. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, And people who witness that or people who experience it and they've never seen it before, they're like, what's going on? This is weird. I've done something wrong with me. Yeah. but when you tap into the energetic orgasm and you tap into those superpowers of how sensitive the energetic is mm-hmm. and how available they are to energy and ecstatic orgasmic states, boy, I mean, the energetic is, is like a Ferrari when it comes to their yeah. eroticism. Yeah. I, mean, I, I also, I love hearing more about this because I think part of what I work with men on is that cultivation of their energy and being able to use their energetic hands, not only their mm. physical hands and their, yes. you know, their energetic heart and their body and all of that to, to right to not even have to touch and make ah. that, um, that connection even hotter. So this is awesome. For sure. And then somebody who um, is the sexual blueprint, they will look at the energetic and they'll just be completely baffled. Like, uh-huh. wait a second. Uh-huh. I, wait. <laughs> I, I want think, the, I like, the raw, tangible. You right know? in there, in the yeah. genitals. Uh, you know, let's yeah. go for the orgasm. What is all this really strange stuff? <laughs> and the problem for the energetic, one of the shadows, is when you, when you go into their space, move into that, their physical space mm-hmm. too fast, too, too fast. quick, yep. it just shuts them down. Yep. Um, and often can create traumatic response or can reinforce things that may create resentment in the relationship right. because it, their energy feels not being respected. And yeah. if you don't have this language, you don't know what, how to cultivate it, work with it, express it to a lover and tell them what's going on, then um, it, you, you're, you're operating blind. Yes. And we've, we have couples that in, you know, come to us after 20 years of being in a relationship and just getting this information is just like, what? Oh. Oh my God. It's, that's and, so painful. I mean, thank God yeah. they're getting it. And wow, what would it be like if couples from the beginning of their relationships really used this and could communicate like this? For sure. And that's one of the things with any modality, you know, the, any personality typing system, the five love by languages, Myers Briggs, they're, you know, they, they point to truths. Of yeah. course, an energetic can have many of the other blueprints. Right. Okay. Like, so that, that actually is like when I did my test, I was one main, but I think four of the other ones, they actually came out almost close. Yeah. So we do that in percentages. So um, people take the quiz, you get your primary blueprint type, 
and then you get percentages for where your others rate in a hundred percent scale. Yeah. Um, sometimes people come out equal on all of them. And uh, in that case, we just kick out the one that has like one variable more that as your primary type, uh -huh, uh -huh. but that points, I'll, I'll, I'll cap the whole thing off with what that points to in somebody's erotic personality. If yeah. you're kind of matching up equal on all of them. Okay. Um, so the next blueprint that we talk about usually is the sensual blueprint. Mm -hmm. They bring the artistry. They're about the senses all being ignited. They have the superpowers of having full body, deep, deeply felt orgasm, and they too can have non-genital orgasms. Mm -hmm. Or so we'll eat an amazing strawberry, or see an incredible painting, or hear a piece of music. Yes. Sensuals will eat some food, or or be in an environment. You'll you'll often hear them physically moaning. They'll be like, mm, <laughs> mm, oh, mm, oh. <laughs> yes. they'll often touch their clothing that you'll you can kind of pick sensuals out because they'll have like 10 different textures they'll have uh -huh. a scarf <laughs> and a cotton shirt and a jacket and then some other you know thing on their head that's fluffy <laughs> yes. so they just love textures they love beautiful environments so they bring the beauty the beauty to the sexual environment it's so great um, i love how this one also you know there's that point of uh, I often work with men around expanding that sense of orgasm, right? That it's not mm. just a genital experience, that it, it involves so much more. And both of these types, the sensual and the energetic, point to that. For sure. Each one has their own superpower mm -hmm. so, or superpowers in, some case, in, in mm. all cases, really. Mm. Um, the shadow of the sensual is that um, they can, the monkey mind, the mind chatter. So... They're in a space and there's an intimate moment brewing and they notice that the lighting is too bright or the music's on too loud or they didn't pay that bill or they forgot to respond to that email. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden their orgasmic arousal map, they're, Drops. they're on the path. It's just yeah. boom, yeah. done. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the biggest interruptions for the sensual. Um, also for a sensual, one of the things too is a sensual typically needs to relax in uh -huh. order to have uh -huh. sex. Yeah. So, so that's how they open up to it. And if they're not in their body, if they're not connected in some physical way, it's really hard to connect to their sexual energy. Yeah, that makes so much sense. For sure. Then uh, sexual, that is pretty much what you think of. You know, it's like, it's what we think of as sex. It's genitals, it's nudity, it's going right for the orgasm. And what's so awesome about sexuals is they just bring the unabashed fun to sex, right? right? No shame, like, usually. No shame. I mean, we all have some degree of shame. So I could see where that could actually, there could be shame even if someone is a sexual type, but less shame it tends to be. Well, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, for the, again, for the cock bodied among us, it's a more rewarded it can be shamed, you know, it can be like you're a uh, toxic masculine and you're putting your sexuality out there and it's inappropriate and you're boundary crossing and all the things, especially as we grow into a mature, into a culture that's more conscious of consent. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the sexual, you know, they just, they're, they, they'll often be like, well, what is all this busy work? Why do I need What's to put the kind? music on? <laughs> Why do we, I have to stand 10 feet away from you and I gaze for 20 minutes. Right. Come on, let's just get to it. <laughs> and I can imagine, right, for couples who have these different types and for say one who's energetic and one who's sexual, yeah, that could cause a huge misunderstanding oh and upset. <laughs> and you picked kind of, you picked one that is the one that we probably see the deepest challenges with yeah. the most uh, gap between mm -hmm. how they're aroused and their understanding of each other's sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this, the, and the sexual will tend to collapse that space. That's yeah. so important for the energetic and it will, tr it, it, it will see a really powerful buildup res of resentments yeah. in couples that have these opposing blueprints. Yeah. That makes sense. And then, you know, coming back to that language piece, like if you're, we, we talk about these languages kind of like, we don't really believe there's incompatibility, but uh -huh. sexual incompatibility is a myth. So Great. I love that. Yeah. Part of this is because like, okay, let's say I speak German and you speak French. Mm -hmm. We meet, we have enough basic language to communicate. We're falling in love, just energy. Our hormones are kicking off. We're at some art museum and loving the same paintings. There's a whole thing brewing and we want to pursue it but we don't 
instantly say, well, you speak French, I speak German. We're not compatible. Uh We can't even give this a shot. What do you do? You know, what would you do? You go out and you learn the language of the person that you want to communicate with. Right. And you honor them by learning how to speak it. And the more fluent you can get with it, the more they're honored, seen, felt, heard, fed, fulfilled in that connection. So it takes effort. It takes a willingness. And that's where um, people, I think, get lazy and say, oh, we're just sexually incompatible. Right. Because I love the foundation that sexual incompatibility actually doesn't exist, right? That mm. when you come from there, then it's more of a question of, well, how can we, um, you know, be better to each other and how can we connect more, you know, with more pleasure? Mm, for sure. Yeah, it's that honor and be seen. I mean, that's the fundamental thing I feel that I've come to in the purpose of relationship mm-hmm. is is it's an it's a space where I get to fully see no matter what is going on for my lover, who they are, what yeah. they are, what yeah. they desire, and with deep curiosity, just draw out more and more of who are you? What do you need? What turns you on? What scares you? What turns you off? What are your desires that may freak me out? Yeah. But at least I go like, oh, well, that's really interesting. Why right. does that turn you on? Hear them and yeah. you know, and see and talk about it and yeah, yeah, yeah. Discuss what's and, possible. And it's sort of the, it's the bar by which I you know ended up cultivating the current relationship I have. I needed a partner who could see me fully for every aspect of who I am, uh-huh. even the parts they didn't agree with, the parts that confronted them, the yeah. messy parts, so that I, so it was, uncon- we were, it was a foundation of unconditional love. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so shadows, five, shadows. Oh yeah, shadow and the number Shadows five. of the sexual, they actually can be shame, mm-hmm. especially for the vulva bodied among us. There are a lot of highly sexual women, vulva bodied folks, and uh, you know, they were slut shamed or they were yeah. really turned out for being into their own pleasure or being excited about sex. Yeah. So there's a shame factor there. One of my big growth edges around working with the blueprints was discovering how powerful sexual shame existed in my body. Because uh-huh. uh, my sexual blueprint would vary like at the zero to 7% whenever I'd take the quiz. Yeah. And my lover, Jaya, her partner is, and she's like high sexual, high energetic. Uh-huh. So I'm kinky and, and sensual. Uh-huh. So my sexual is way down. So we we're mismatched blueprints on, uh, you know, when we, when we first looked at this. Interesting. And what I discovered uh, a couple of years ago was just this layer of the good boy. Yes. Thing, right? If I put my sexuality out there, I'm the dick. I'm the jerk. Uh-huh. I'm the I'm person asshole. who's imposing my desire yeah. on this person I'm interested in. Yeah. So I buried it. I turned it in on myself. And I also bought the myth that women are not turned like sexual. Right. Like I, the Victorians came up with that one. Yeah. <laughs> the women, women don't like sex. It's just, yeah. it's just a thing oh my, that men like. Oh, oh my God. That is so <laughs> off base. <laughs> My experience has been once uh, female vulva body people start getting into their own eroticism, uh-huh. they're unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible, yeah. uh, incredible amount of desire. Yeah, and it's, it's it. powerful. I mean, all of these are so powerful too, as I think about men who come to me with partners who aren't feeling very turned on or um, you know, dating and having some of those incompatibilities and how when you really, I'm getting that when you really get these types, when you have this language, if someone isn't showing up as turned on, you get to bring more of a curiosity and this Mm. exploration versus, uh, I guess this is just a lost cause. Exactly. It's like having a secret, secret decoder ring. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Once you start to get really facile with the blueprints and what turns them on shadow aspects, it, it really like, it's like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, I'm, I have superpowers and I can really come into this with confidence that yes. the person I'm here with, I'm going to find out what flips their lid and, and I'm going to flip their lid. Yeah. Yeah. It's I often thing. talk to the men I work with around like, okay, I'm, I'm helping you have these superpowers and please you have to use them, commit to using them for good. Yes. 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 <laughs> Ethics are very, very important. Yes. Um, yes. Especially when you start getting skills in this area. Yes. Um, so then the kinky. Yeah. So this is my primary blueprint. 
Mm-hmm. This is my fastest path to arousal. Mm-hmm. Um, and superpowers for the kinky. Uh, well, first, I'll, I'll, we define kinky as whatever is taboo for you. Uh-huh. So the stereotype here is that kink means dungeons and whips and chains and intense pain or intense, you know, slave dom, slave owner kind yep. of gameplay, yep. right? Yep. And that is very much part of the incredible uh, range of, of opportunity of play in the kinky blueprint. But when we look at just like the arousal coming from being turned on by taboo, mm-hmm. that can be as simple as a couple having sex out of doggy, out of missionary position. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. you know, because we had, we had one couple that uh, came to us 20 years. Every Monday they go to the same restaurant. They'd have sex on Thursdays in missionary <laughs> position. Wow. And once they started getting introduced to variety, it was literally the most titillating taboo to think about having sex doggy style. Huh, right. Just some other position. Yeah, exactly. No whips, no chains. No whips, no chains. (laughs) And then we break it down into psychological kink and Uh sensation-based or physiological kink. Beautiful. Yeah. So there's superpowers for the kinky as well of being able to have orgasm without even being touched. I love it. Um, Can you you do just a brief description for men who haven't heard of what a psychological kink would be? Yeah. So an example would be um, like... um, dominance and submission games Mm -hmm. where you may be doing no physical touch but it's a um, daddy dom little girl scenario or -hmm. it's a slave master scenario where um, you're doing uh, boss like uh, seductive erotic bossing around where you're Uh telling your partner to walk around the room and stand up against the wall now stick your ass up Ooh, that that is just stunning Ooh, Mm -hmm. you know bring that over here Good girl. Right. Sit down. Open your mouth. And then feed them a grape. Right. Like it, but that that being owned, that submitting right. can be it such even a powerful. Have to go into sex or what we would might describe as the sexual realm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And there's so many ways. There's predicament uh, kink, where which is a psychological game of getting putting somebody in a scenario that they absolutely can't get out of. Mm-hmm. They're going to get punished if they can't get out of it, and then you start having them do certain things for you: sing a song, or you know, kiss my toes, and I'll and I'll and I'll help you out a little bit. Uh-huh. I'll release that buckle, so maybe you can get out of that situation. <laughs> yeah. uh, where you know you're you're strapped to the doorknob and and uh, you you can't get free because and you can't right right you're all I, bound. I just up. love how the range, like you were saying, the range of where we all you know where where turn on happens. That it's such a wide range for so many people. Uh, it's <laughs> it's vast, and uh, we often say like we could be studying kink for the next ten years and mm-hmm. only touch the surface of this blueprint. Yeah, because there's so much variety, yeah. um, and then the physiological kink is, or the sensation based is more of that kind of thing of con- heavy constriction or mm-hmm. um, whips and chains or um, needles and or intense scratching, spanking, bondage. So that's where we'd put the the physiological or sensation based kink. Yeah, and of course you can be both. So, right. um, and shadow the biggest shadow for kinky is shame. Mm. It's just like, wait, why am I wired this way? Uh, uh-huh. This is really strange. Why am I turned on by that thing? Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't understand and it. Uh-huh. there's a lot of um, preconceptions of what kinky means. Oh, yeah. you must have been abused. There's a history of trauma. Mm-hmm. For many kinks, like myself included, that is just not the case. Yeah. Like we all have some form of societal trauma around kink just because our culture is so cloistered and doesn't want to talk openly about it and admit that we have all this stuff going on. So there's hiding and there's shame and there's certain things that we've been shamed for. So I had that level of just generic social trauma, mm-hmm. but I wasn't abused. I wasn't, wasn't neglected. I had no, none of that. Yep. And this is the blueprint. Like I said, it's my fastest path to arousal. Um, we did a deep immersion because Jaya, my partner, was writing a book on kink. Uh-huh. We did a deep immersion where 
she she dommed me and I submitted to her for 40 days. Wow, 40 days. 10 days off <laughs> and we flipped it and I dommed her and she submitted to me for 40 days. That's a that's a long experiment. Just for those of you listening, if you're going to experiment with something, I would start with, you know, very very small experiments, like a couple minutes or an hour. Yes. <laughs> Start with a day. We don't recommend that you do this. We're kind yes. of extreme. Yes. Wait <laughs> um, to build up to that. Yes. And another footnote that I would say specifically around kinky yeah. is uh, safety, safety, safety. Yes. yes. This is an arena that you do not want to mess with. You want to get professional training, especially if you're doing physiological kink. You can do nerve damage, cut off blood flow, um, you know, create severe damage, physical damage. Yeah. And if you don't know how to hold a container and set up a container, you can traumatize or re-traumatize somebody who, you know, may be dealing with serious oh God, sexual yeah. traumatic issues. I mean, I've, I've had some of those experiences in past relationships where we would dive into some of these dynamics and just... I guess what I would say is um, not be aware of how deep this goes mm-hmm. right? and the psychological and emotional impact that can happen as a result of playing out these scenes, they can be really beautiful and then they can be really re-traumatizing. So yep. I love what you're saying, right? Get support. Don't try to do this alone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's, it's powerful stuff. It can be very healing, but I wouldn't go into it with the idea of using it as a healing modality unless... Mm. Yeah. You're deeply, deeply skilled. Yes. And uh, when we did the 4040, Jaya's trauma started to come up and we uh-huh. went immediately to work with a therapist nice. uh, who yeah. was kink friendly, yep. knew the environment, knew how to work with us and told us what to titrate, what to pull uh-huh. back on. And then we were able to continue playing. And what occurred for Jaya, for, she has a history of deep trauma, deep yeah. physical trauma. Yep. Um, she gained agency. Uh-huh. She, you know, parts of her that had lost her voice as a young child yep. in she that scenario were able to, there. yeah, exactly, come in and say, this is how I want it, this is what I want, and yes. control the scenario. Yes. And as long as I was holding that container fully, it was very healing for her. Well, yeah, and part of what that speaks to also is the the willingness to be flexible in the midst of whatever play or experiments that you're doing, right? That, Mm. uh, you know, you got support and then continued with your experiment as opposed to either A, well, this is, you know, this is messed up and we're just done and we've kind of failed this experiment or B, let's just keep going through this no matter what, because we said we were going to, both of those can be recipes for disaster. Right. And this, in this arena, people tend to suffer in silence. Yeah. And then they stack the you know, so-called mistakes one after the other, after the other yep. with no way to let the steam off. Right. No, no communication. Way process. Yeah. 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 And so, so like you, you think about areas where people get uh, coaching, mm-hmm. you know, business, they'll get coaching in relationship, but very few therapists really are uh, trained in, in working with sexual aspects of people's personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, And they'll, so people get training in all sorts of areas, athletics, their body, their health, their finances, their work, their, um, you know, their relationship to some degree. But this area, which is the most intimate area between Mm -hmm. most people, is an area where people do not get training, do not get coaching, do very little research and study, and don't find mentors who can take them through the process um, in in a way that actually unwinds all of the stories Mm -hmm. and gives people freedom to play in a very playful, um, connecting, uh, loving, zone of loving zone of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you support couples who have different erotic blueprints to bridge that gap and have more passion and deepen their connection? Well, um, I don't want to leave out the shapeshifter. Oh, great. I, I think we've had people on the trajectory of getting all these blueprints at least dialed Ooh, in. The, so the shapeshifter is the one who you can, you test kind of positive. <laughs> however you want to say that. Across the board. Across the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the shapeshifter is the, they're, they are the, um, in, in many ways, the most sophisticated of the blueprint types mm-hmm. because they're turned on by all of it. Yeah. Ten, they tend to have a voracious appetite. 
you could be three hours into a lovemaking session and, and you know, one person's ready to tap out and the other person's like, what are you talking about? We're just getting going. I'm, I'm just, that was foreplay. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and they're turned the, and they can be incredible lovers because they're turned on by all of it. They, they can come and give and supply with confidence. So many of the blueprint turn ons to the, the person they're with. Uh, so they can be kind of like the Stradivarius of the instruments, like the, mm -hmm. the, the, the peak machine, the, the incredible sports car that mm -hmm. just you, could, you know, drive to the moon. Um, and one of the challenges or shadows for the shapeshifter is because of that wide palette, that incredible depth and voracious desire, they can often feel um, un underfed, undernourished, uh -huh. Uh -huh. starving in their sexuality. And they will go in and they'll feed their lover in that blueprint. They've got a sensual lover. They'll turn into the sensual and they'll be amazing in that. But all these other notes in their turn on are not being um, played. Played. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, another aspect of the sensual is um, the, they, they think they're too much. Oh, the shapeshifter. Yeah. Shape oh, the, oh, that's what I mean. This that is the shapeshifter. Mm -hmm. They're too much. They're too big. They've been told this. They've been shamed for, the, the bigness of their personality. Mm -hmm. So often they've shut off multiple aspects of who they are and how they want to behave and how they want to interact with people, uh, which also then feeds into what we kind of think of as a sixth blueprint type, which is yeah. the, the shadow shapeshifter. Uh -huh. And that's a shapeshifter, but they've got the shadows of every blueprint and none of the positives. Oh, wow. Very, very challenging position to be in not not you can you can get out of that but you really have to go into deep shadow work and start to pull apart all the mythologies that may be putting the brakes on your pleasure inability to connect to your body um willingness to be seen for your kinky desires and your sec mm -hmm. your in, intense sexual desire and all the so there's just this it's just a layering on of all the shadow aspects of every blueprint type that sounds very hard very hard, yeah. <laughs> very hard. But that can be, yeah, it could definitely be worked with, and it, but it's sometimes it's just kind of a long road, and there's a lot of patience and a need uh -huh. for allowing space for healing. Yeah, it sounds like that would be one to definitely get professional help. But again, not give up or not think that this is hopeless because no. now that you're describing it, I think I could see someone who's experiencing that. You know, why do I keep falling into these? you know, tunnels or kind of rabbit holes or why uh -huh. is this not working that actually that gives some hope. Yes, yeah. for sure. And then you were asking about how we work with people yeah. and it's not just couples, it's singles, you know, right. like we are erotic beings, whether we're in a relationship or not. Mm -hmm. And often for the singles, they'll dismiss, they'll, you know, they'll get fascinated by this, but they'll say, Oh, I got to wait till I got a, a partner. And I'm just want to shout to the top of the hills. No, right? Actually, right. Understand this before you. Yes. Learn your body. Mm -hmm. Learn it inside and out, and and build those skills, and start to be able to articulate what you want, what you need. So when you do go on that date, or you start to get serious about that mm -hmm. next person, you have you're laying a foundation of like this is this is my bar. This is the this is the bar be with below which I will not go. Yeah in terms of what I require of my partner and their willingness to feed me, to be with who I am sexually and to learn how to turn me on yeah. and vice versa. I come into the thing with skills, with, an, with a new confidence of like, Hey, I know I, I, you may not even know how far your pleasure can go. Let me right. show you. Right. 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 <laughs> I, can, I can take you on a ride. We can explore this and ways. Maybe exactly. The and ultimate lover. Yeah. What about for couples who have been stuck in a dynamic and haven't, you know, found their way to each other or their way back to each other after having kids or yeah. aging or menopause or all those things? Oh, so many things can interrupt that, you know, initial limerence stage of deep right. love and connection. That honeymoon phase. Yeah. The honeymoon phase. Uh, and it's kind of inevitable that that just kind of the energy lowers there. It's called limerence, the hormonal map starts to shift all sorts of biological reasons for it. So this is where it really becomes even more important to cultivate that sexuality and put uh -huh. some energy into it. Uh -huh. There was a research study done about arousal by, I won't remember who they are, but it's a group of uh, Canadian researchers and the 
the outcome of the research was basically people in typically are not walking around aroused. Mm. Like it's not most people's natural state. Yeah. So the people who are waiting for it to be spontaneous, waiting for it to be just like, oh, spur of the moment, oh my God, I'm ready, I can't keep my hands off of you. Uh-huh. They're going to live in dissatisfaction and probably reinforce stories of I'm not loved, I'm not desired, right, I'm not desirable, right. as opposed to going, oh, well, we're all walking around in an unturned on state. So now we need to set the, set the time aside. We need to actually schedule this. We need to put effort and uh, focus. Yes. To make it happen. And the, the first step, of course, you know, in our zone is really just that first bit of information about your erotic blueprint, just like starting to get some language and vocabulary to learn how to understand, articulate and express and ask for your needs getting met. Yes. And then we go deeper into a whole bunch of layers where we won't have time to dive into these on the the podcast today but we get into feeding the blueprint. So mm-hmm. what is it that feeds the blueprint? Every what is it aspect. that feeds each type, you mean? Yeah, each type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's the, what are the turn-ons? What, are, what is all the pleasure possibilities for the energetic, sensual, kinky, sexual, and shapeshifter? Yes. So you're building a vocabulary, um, doing things like body mapping, where you're, and this can be done solo, this can be done as partner play, where you're mapping the body and playing with different, blueprints uh, on different parts of the body and different toys and different ways of you know using sensation and different mm-hmm. types of touch so it's building that vocabulary so then you have a whole reservoir of ways to to play with each other play mm-hmm. with yourself mm-hmm. turn turn on excite also understanding the shadows and the places that shut down if i touch my lever this way that's a complete shutdown in in the arousal uh-huh. so that's a no-go. Um, so that's in the feeding zone. And then we get into speaking the blueprints. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with the language that you use. So every blueprint has different words that turn them on. They have different ways of, um, they have different tonalities even and how they want to mm-hmm. be spoken to. Mm-hmm. And the speaking also goes to congruency. So if uh, if the way I'm speaking to you and my body language are completely incongruent, that's going to set something off on a subconscious level. Oh, in that your is so system. powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Like learning how to actually use your body and your tone in that same way to have it be aligned inside and outside. Right. Otherwise, especially for, you know, like you said, female bodied, there's this spidey sense of something's off here and I don't feel safe. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they pick it up. Energetic, energetic cock body people will do the, the same thing. Yeah. So uh, again, the gender sometimes plays no role, but the congruency, uh, it can right. be read. Right, right, right. Yeah. And can interrupt connection. Yeah. So that's some aspects of what the speaking, then there's so many fun ways to discover what your lover's hot words are and all that kind of stuff, yeah. which leads to being able to create better texting and better, leaving better voice messages and the seduction that happens in between lovemaking sessions. Mm. This is so amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, the, so speaking, feeding, uh, healing, mm-hmm. a major aspect. So do you know Emily Nagaski's Come As You Are? No. So it's a great book, and she developed a deeper dive into some research that was going on that was revealing that it's more... Um, is more about taking the brakes off your pleasure than it is adding more fuel mm. that will increase your connection to pleasure because it's those shadow aspects that keep us from opening to what's possible. Interesting. So healing the blueprint and that's healing the shadows. That's going deep into, um, you know, unwinding the stories that we've built up, yeah. the inherited stories, the ones that may have come from trauma or from um, societal lessons that we learn from teachers, religion, um, you know, watching bad porn, all that kind of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then there's um, there's the the most fun part is the expanding the blueprints, huh. and that's where you start to discover the blueprints in a way where it's not just you're learning them for a rote. Because my lover is this, I'm going to do that. Yeah. But how do you access? How do you make your way if you're a hardcore sexual blueprint, you don't understand energetic, 
what, what's the pathway to expanding uh -huh. and actually feeling energetic and turned on by the energetic. Yes. So you, you can, you can dive into all that's erotically possible. Amazing. This is incredible. And so clarifying for people who haven't really explored and who have a sense of, again, hopelessness or um, it hasn't worked for me. And then also for people who have had a great sex life to expand it even more. Yes, Beautiful. exactly. <laughs> well, okay. I'm just realizing time is running short, even though we've just started, I feel like we could talk about this forever. Um, what would you, what, what's one important piece that you don't want to leave without sharing? Hmm. Willingness. Hmm. This is a root challenge for a lot of relationships. One partner is more willing than the other. Yeah. And, um, that's where a lot of hopelessness comes in. Yes. And often the willingness or the unwillingness of one partner is because there's something deep going on where they have an unexpressed fear, uh -huh. fear of failure, fear of not knowing, fear of it's going to just have to put too much effort in and I'm already exhausted. So the curiosity of the partner who's in the willing space mm. to just keep going in with empathy to discover what is the block what is standing in your way and also you know being curious with the partner of uh, of laying out with vulnerability this is where i'd love our relationship to be yeah i would love to be deeply connected with you i would love to have our sex life be off the hook off the charts magnetic attraction mm -hmm. great polarity conscious sexuality i'm turned on all the time you're turned on all the time and, and is that what you want yeah even if we don't know how to get there, is that what you want? Right. And then going into the curiosity of, okay, well, if we're, if we're on the same page and you are willing, yes, to, to see what we can do, then how do we get there? Right. Then, then we, as a team, can explore and get support and get resources. I mean, this feels really profound, like the willingness as the, the foundation. You know, if you're building a house or a building, willingness seems here, like it's what actually allows a relationship to grow. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting there and you're one of the unwilling ones, yeah, I'm done, I'm over it, but you're still in your relationship, mm -hmm. perhaps you have deep love for your partner, mm -hmm. then it's the question is, well, what's the cost? What's the cost of spending another five years, another 10 years yeah. to my relationship? To, if you've got kids, how are my kids going to perceive loving relationships? Yeah. By giving them a healthy foundation to find the person that's going to meet and match them. Yeah. How, how is my health going to be? Yeah. How lonely am I going to feel in my relationship just because I'm sticking it out? And what's yeah. my own block? Like if I love my partner. Right. What is the block? Going, yeah. What's the going compassion. on inside of me? I, mm -hmm. I appreciate that you're bringing that compassion too, because right. If somebody is unwilling rather than looking at that person and saying, well, you're just, you know, you're, you're being an asshole because you're not willing. There's, there's, like you said, there's usually some fear or some frustration or resentment or feeling unseen under there. Buried trauma. I mean, so many people are walking around, they've never told their partners of a very severe incident that happened in their childhood or teen years or 20 years, you're, you know, the 20 year old, whenever. Yeah. And they just never revealed it. And it, and there could be shame burying that. Like yes. they feel bad, broken, wrong because yeah. it happened. Don't know how to process it. And they just don't want to go near their partner because they become the representation of the, that vulnerability. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for doing this deep work and for making this available to people. I feel really excited for people to have this and more and more people to have this. And yeah, really appreciating your work. We didn't get your blueprint type. Oh, should I say it? <laughs> yes, if you're willing to. <laughs> uh, so I came out as sensual. Nice. And But actually sensual and energetic had the same percentage and they were both around 21, 22%. Great. And then the, um, I think the only one, I think sexual might have been very low, like 5% or less. So I think I was kind of a range of... Mm -hmm you know, many of them, but, yep. but yeah, so the shapeshifter makes sense to me as well as the sensual. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so powerful 
you know, to be able to take this into our relationships and to, I, I, you know, one of the, the main things I work with with people is communication. And so you can't really communicate if you don't have these deeper understandings. So mm. I love the fact that I get to bring this to more of my clients. Thank you for doing so. I'm honored to be here. Yeah. And where can people find you if they want more? Uh, the best thing is going to send people to the quiz because I'd rather they just get that information. Then they'll get them on our mailing list. They can find the website from there. But it's so great. Um, so I'll put sure. the link to the quiz yeah. in the show notes. So exactly. you can definitely, I highly recommend it. it took, I don't know, five minutes or less. Take the quiz, yeah. start getting informed so that you can really create what you want to create. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word alive, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.